Now then, we are the Don't Tell Show. We make and review gritty, realist, independent films. We put up a new video every Monday, so if that sounds like your sort of thing, then hit the subscribe button, wherever it is, and we'll see you there. Who's With Me is a 2021 sci-fi indie drama written and directed by Austin Allen James. In it, Marcus, an average young man, awakens to find his apartment under quarantine and completely isolated from the outside world. Ominous messages about toxins and evacuations plaster each screen of his various electronic devices, leaving his next door neighbour, Eileth, as the only person he has contact with. Scared and with few resources, the two try to navigate their way through the indefinite wait, staving off hunger, boredom and paranoia. So, sort of going into this, I was a bit sceptical about it being a sort of a sci-fi film with a budget that small. Like, not not because I think that sci-fi has to have big special effects and has to have everything shown on screen, but it's just that they tend to be really sort of genre-y when they're low budget. I don't know. I don't even know how to explain that. I think it's a sort of science and ideas at the front and technology at the front. Everything else goes to the back, but this film was quite different. It was sort of the other way around. It's very grounded, very much what we like here. You know, it's it's minimalist in a way that could become stale if it's not handled very well, but it is handled very well. <sighs> Come on. You know, like I, I've talked about before, how the um, the opening of Dawn of the Dead is always so effective to me, the original, and how the the remake didn't have that at all because the remake goes really big and shows a city on fire, but the original. Shit's really hit the fan. But the original, the original uses a confined space to create this sense of dread and claustrophobia and terror. And who, Who's With Me does a very similar thing. It has that sort of feel to it at the beginning. That it's just, it's so simple. All you need is, is that closed space. And the idea of everything going to shit outside of that space is what makes that space seem to get smaller and close in and close in. That's what this, this film and the original Dawn of the Dead knew how to handle really well. I don't know. The message just says more info to come. I have no idea what that means. It also reminded me of the, the classic New Zealand film, The Quiet Earth. It has that same, it has the same sort of feel to it, but it has the same, there's a sort of focus on character and on small details that a big, that, like, it is a big story, but it's so confined and so sort of condensed and stripped down. You, you really get to like these characters and like, like The Quiet Earth, you see them go through these different stages of sort of, change and acceptance of this new way in very very sort of funny human but also terrifying ways that keep the narrative driving forward even though we're never actually going anywhere but that whole thing got an oxy call got a half of that uh, acid in my back got my liver stunting got my crazy had a seizure last year because i'm going too crazy i think what's who who's with me actually does better better than this quiet earth because he, he in, in the quiet earth he does actually travel around and meet these other characters it develops that way but in, in this one they still they stay in the same place and we get these new interesting visuals and interesting interesting character development and mix of excitement amongst it but but after every bit of excitement we're dragged back into the silence and the stillness of do you have any kind of sense of how long it's been no it, it makes it hit so much harder like i've said before about it if it was just grim 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 all the way through you wouldn't have that, but you have these sort of funny bits and these quirky bits, and then you come back to the grimness again, and it hits so much harder because you're getting, or why, because you're experiencing a wider human experience by by doing that. It's also just really creative, like in the way that Reservoir Dogs, Reservoir Dogs, I think is probably Tarantino's best film because it's so stripped down and so like he was so limited with his resources that he had to really do everything in that one building. But the film is still thrilling because of how creative he had to get. It's the same thing here. You know, after that film, he could do what he wanted and he just got all this like long babbling dialogue that he could, it, it doesn't really add anything to the film other than making it feel like a Tarantino film. But Reservoir Dogs and this both do exactly what they, they're trying to do because of their limitations. They've excelled with those limitations creatively and keep you, made, made films that are just thrilling and driving and take you somewhere. Oh, no, 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 no. So who's with me? Great, great atmosphere. The great, great characters. The, the mystery of it. The mystery of it keeps building. The sci-fi of it that there's you don't really get to see what's outside, but you do get these little glimpses that are really creative. That really, I just thought, who would think to do that?
It, it really re it reminded me of some of my favourite films that are in, are in that sort of solitude, apocalyptic arena. It's a one location film that's creative enough to just keep keep driving, keep being creative, keep keep up the tension, the mystery, and the the the, the growing intrigue into these characters and their inner workings, as well as just what what else is going on. It's great, a great great sci-fi film. Um, it's available to watch for free on YouTube. As always, the link will be below. Please do watch it. Please tell them that we sent you if you do. And we are the Don't Tell Show. And we'll see you next Monday.